Numbers 6, verse 22. And the Lord, circle Lord, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron. So Aaron is Moses' brother, who is the high priest of Israel. Speak to Aaron and his son saying, thus you shall bless, circle bless. Thus you shall bless the people of Israel and you shall say to them, this is what Aaron is, is to speak over the people. The Lord bless, circle bless. The Lord bless you and keep you, circle keep. The Lord make his face, circle face, to shine, circle shine upon you and be gracious, circle gracious to you. The Lord lift up, circle lift up, his countenance, circle countenance upon you and give you peace, circle peace. So, they shall put my name, circle name, upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. You ever want to be blessed by God? Has there ever been a moment in your life where you said, I wish God would bless me. I wish God would bless my life. Because watch, for many of us, we're not sure who God is, or even if there is a God. And for many of us, we live with the idea that, man, I wish if there is a God, I could know God so that once I know who God is and what God wants and the character of who God is, I could align myself with that so that God would bless me. If there's ever been a part of your life where you're like, man, I wish, I wish I could know God so that God could bless my life. I wish God would walk alongside of me in my life and bless me. What's God's character? We're going to talk about that this morning. If you got your notes, pull them out. They should be in your bulletin. If you're on Facebook watching us, watching us uh, wherever you're at in the world, at the top of the comments section, there's a link. You can click on that link and my notes will pop up. Number one is this. God's attention is toward his people. God's attention is toward his people. I'm going to lay a foundation today out of Aaron's blessing, so pay attention. We're going to walk through the character of God, and it'll directly relate to how you interact with God. And the number one thing I want to lay down for you is this. God's attention is toward his people. After rescuing his people from Egypt as slaves, God gave his covenant requirements in the form of the Mosaic law. So everybody pay attention. I'm going to, I'm going to do some background work so you understand what's going on here. People of Israel are down in Egypt. The famous story, they start to propagate. They become so numerous, the Egyptians go, these guys are so many, they're going to take over our country. So in fear, they enslave them. They make them slaves in Egypt because they're scared that they're going to take over their own country. The people of God, Israel, cry out to God and they ask God to deliver them. So after hundreds of years, this numerous amount of people who are slaves now cry out to God. The famous story, God calls Moses. Moses comes and rescues the people of Israel. He pulls them out. He is now their leader. He pulls them out of, out of slavery. He's going to lead them to the promised land, the land of Canaan, modern-day Israel, along the Mediterranean Sea. They're going from Egypt in the south to the land of Canaan in the north. On the way there, they take a long, circuitous route to getting there, but before they started on their journey, watch. God makes it very clear what kind of God he is. At the very beginning of their journey, God in Numbers 6, in the law, tells the high priest Aaron, who is, there's Moses and Aaron, Moses' brother, he's the high priest. God speaks to Moses, who Moses speaks to his brother, and his brother speaks the blessing to the people. So God shows what kind of character he has to the people of God that he has called to be with him. God then gave Moses a special declaration of blessing to be proclaimed over the whole nation by Aaron the high priest. This would often be done after the sacrificial services were performed to forgive the sins of Israel. At the completion of the ceremony, the priest would lift his hands and then bless the people. Ready? Here's our first principle. Sometimes God disrupts our lives just because he wants to bless us. So watch, we're in a series called Disruption. Anybody's life been disrupted in the last seven months? 
We got chaos in the in the financial market. We got we got social uh, chaos and anxiety. We've got health issues. We've got political pressure. We feel there's just disruption everywhere. So let me speak into it. Ready? Understand this. In the chaos of our lives, in the disruption of our lives, sometimes God disrupts the disruption to bless us. Watch how amazing God is. Many times our anxiety comes from the fact that we feel like there's no answer to things. Who's, who's going to fix our social problems? Nobody. Who's going to fix our financial problems? Who knows when that'll get fixed? Nobody. Who's going to fix my family because I, I can't get along with my wife? Nobody. I've been fighting with my wife for, you know, 58 years or whatever. Who's going to fix my children? Nobody. They're jacked up like every day, all day long. Like, and so watch, we go to bed at night feeling hopeless. Nobody's going to fix our country. Nobody's going to fix our financial situation. Nobody's going to fix our health situation. We're going to be in COVID for the rest of our lives. I, I'm a student and I can't go to school. Like I had plans to like finish school and be married and whatever. And now I'm stuck at home and I'll never find a husband at home. <laughs> Like, I was going to go to school and get my MRS degree. <laughs> now I'm stuck staring at my brother all day long because I'm online. It's like we have plans, and it's all disrupted. But guess what? The only reason we feel that way is we feel like nobody's running the ship. Nobody's in control. But God is in control. God, and here's what I'm going to talk about today. Ready? Ready? In the disruption, the chaos of our lives, the only reason we feel that way is because we feel like nobody can fix these problems. But when we turn our eyes to God, God now gives us peace. Amidst the chaos, God inserts himself into our disruption and disrupts our disruption to give us peace. Disrupts our disruption to give us joy. Disrupts our disruption to bless our lives. That's the power of God, that he can insert himself into our chaos and bring peace. And that's exactly what God does for his own people who were slaves. They, they, were, they couldn't be more disrupted, but God brings blessing into their lives. This blessing, so look at it, Numbers 6, verse 24, this blessing has three different sections. The first one is general security. The Lord bless you and what? Look at it in your own Bible or your own little, your, your $800 Bible. What is it? The Lord bless you and what? Keep you. Keep you. You know what that means? That's a word that shepherds use. You keep the sheep. It means you, you, you take care of the sheep. You make sure the sheep don't run off. You make sure your sheep are well fed, well taken care of. Your sheep aren't like mangled or scared. It's, it's what a good shepherd does when he takes care of his sheep. So the very first part of this blessing is, may the Lord bless you and keep you what that means is God has your back. Stop living in anxiety. Stop living like, man, if my 401k goes away, my whole life's done. Stop living like, if COVID keeps happening, I can't move on. Stop living like, if, if nobody fixes our social issues, we have no way forward. No, listen to me. With God, there's always a way forward. With God, there is always a chance of peace. With God, there's always an answer. So let me, let me help you with this. Whatever your interior narrative is, how you speak to yourself, when you lay your, lay your head down at night and go, I'll never be good enough, or the, the life is chaos, or I just feel I have anxiety all the time. Whatever that, that you, you have a self, you have a self-speak inside your own mind. My encouragement to you is this, get scripture into your mind. When you speak the truth of God to yourself, that's called, that's a biblical version of meditation where you're speaking God's truth into your mind so that you learn truth, so that you act in truth. And when you know the God of truth, you can actually live out truth. And it'll, it'll, it'll clear anxiety from your mind. It'll clear the feeling like nobody's, nobody's taking care of this stuff. No, the Lord bless you and keep you. If you are a child of God, God has your back. God walks with you every day. Though, though, our, though our culture's chaos, though the financial market's chaos, though there's chaos everywhere, you can live in peace and walk in peace. Why? Because the Lord keeps you. The Lord walks with you. There's never a day where you should feel as a child of God, things are out of control. It'll never be, it'll never be good. 
Many times we look for other people to give us peace. We want the country to give us peace. We want, uh, the, the, hopefully the next guy we get elected, he's going to be the one that's going to bring peace to my life. Let me tell you, if either one of those guys gets elected, it's not going to be helpful to our own personal lives. The issue is, don't look for people for peace, look for God for peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. He's the only one that can walk with you in the chaos of your life and bring you peace. The second part is this. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The second part is external success. There's a real reality where God wants to literally physically bless your life. It's the idea of this. He wants to make his face shine upon you like the sunshine outside. Like those of you guys that are sitting outside. The sun just shines upon you and you feel the warmth of the sun. In the shade, you can't see the sun. But man, you walk out into the sun and you feel the warmth. You, you, you get to see the beauty of the world. And that's, that's this picture of God's face turning toward you and being gracious to you. I got up this morning and uh, I walked out to my truck and here's a balloon hanging over my house. And it's got people in a wicker basket. And they're just hanging over my house. I'm watching people hover over my house. And you know what I thought? I thought, what a perfect day, if you want to risk your life, to be in a hot air balloon. So th think about it this morning. We live in the place where people want to come vacation. We live in a place where people get in a hot air balloon and they go up over the vineyards and they're able to see the ocean and they're able to see the vineyards below them and they're able to see the fog roll in and out and the beauty of the greens and the reds and the blues and the browns and like all the beauty of our world. It's the idea that God's goodness just shines on you in the same way as the sun shines on you and gives you the ability to see beauty all around you. So we're in, a, we're in an age of masks, right? Where people are wearing masks everywhere they go. And you know what's tough about wearing masks is that you can't see people's facial expressions. Like they're sticking their tongue out at you like, <laughs> you don't even know. Like you're talking to your kids and they're like, nye, 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 behind their mask, but you think they're going, oh, of course, mom and dad, anything for you. So masks actually hide your facial expression. Literally half of your face is hidden behind a piece of cloth. And so it's really difficult to see like, are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Do you like what I'm saying? Because you can't, you can't see a face. And so it's the idea here of this. It's like God like literally unmasks himself to let his children know that he's atten being attentive to them, that his face toward them is graciousness. His face toward them is love. That he has goodness planned for his children. That's the idea. May, may the Lord's countenance be upon you. May he turn his attention toward you and bless you. And the third part of it is, is internal serenity. If you're living in, if you're a believer, if you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus, you come to know Jesus as your savior and you be, become part of the family of God, while there will be disruptions in your life, you should never live long-term in anxiety or chaos in your mind. Why? Because God is your keeper. Don't put your security in your bank account or how much people like you or how many followers you have on Insta, Insta face to snap to chat. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what people think. It only matters what God thinks. It's awesome when people love us. But at the end of the day, even if that doesn't happen, we have a God that loves us and wants to keep us and shepherd our lives. That's the quality of the God that, that walks with you. This is God's love note to Israel and the only blessing that he commanded to be perpetually spoken to the people. While God loves all people on the earth, he uses his personal covenant name, Yahweh, to bless his people specifically. So uh, one of the famous stories at the burning bush, Exodus 3.15, where God's speaking to Moses right before he sends him to go rescue the people of Israel as slaves. He goes, Moses goes, what God am I gonna say is sending me like, there's a pantheon of gods in, in Egypt. They're gonna, I'm gonna walk in there and go, hey, let these people go. 
And they're going to go, what God do you think is going to have the power over the gods of Egypt? Like, who's this God you're speaking of? And God uses his own personal name, Yahweh, which is the idea that God is the everlasting true God that exists. The true God that can speak into the world, can do power in the world. And so Moses here says, who, am I, who is sending me? God says, Send, I'm sending you with my personal name of Yahweh. And so I want you to look. Look at number six, verse 22, the Lord. Look at verse 24, the Lord. Verse 25, the Lord. Verse 26, the Lord. And then verse 27, they shall put my name upon the people. You know what the capital L-O-R-D is there? I've told, I've told you this a couple times. In your translation, so you understand, the English translators, when they translate the name of God, put it in capital L-O-R-D. So watch, here's a translating understanding. When you read the Lord in all capitals, what the, what the translators are telling you in English is behind that English name is laying the name Yahweh. So literally, it's the personal name of God. It could say, Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance. Verse 27, and so they shall put my name upon the people. This is the personal covenant name of God, which means does God love everybody in the world? Of course. But like a father, he loves his own kids. Like a father, his attention is to his own family. So I got a son, a 20-year-old son. I know it's hard to believe. I'm only like 23. I had him when I was three. It's weird. We started early when I was young. So I got a 20-year-old son right now. And if you have a 20, a late teens, early 20-somethings in your life, um, they don't always do what you ask them to do. And so when I would talk to my son, Caleb, as he was growing up in my home, there are some things he would do that he would obey, and there are some things that I would find out on the backside. He did not listen to dad. I know, surprising, weird. But there are moments I would say this to Caleb. I literally would say this, this to him. Listen to me. I know what you did. And that is not how a Jackson act, asks, acts in the world. You, you have my name. You are a Jackson. So while you think that you're just acting your own self in the world, you're actually representing your dad. Because you have my name. I named you. I gave you your name, your first and your last name. So as you navigate the world, you not only bring your own self to whatever you're doing, you bring the reputation of dad. And you know what's sad? When the children misrepresent their own father. So you know what God's saying here? He's saying, hey, you come into my family, there's responsibilities, but guess what? There is blessing to being in my family. As a dad, I'm gonna take care of my children. Do I love all people in the world? Yep, but I especially take care of my children. My attention is toward my own kids. So God here says, hey, you're gonna put my name on the people. And, you, and I will bless them. Parents love to bless their kids when they obey. But even sometimes when they don't. That's what I tell my son. I go, son, guess what? Dad gives you a house to live in. Like you're not gonna live under a bridge tonight because dad loves you that much even when you don't obey me. I still want to bless your life. I still want to, to do good, good to you. Why? Because dad loves his kids. And honestly, ready? Many of us didn't have a dad growing up. And when I speak of these things, it's difficult to comprehend. Many of us are like, I don't even know who my dad is. So when I speak of fatherhood or loving, loving care of masculinity, many of us go, I don't, I don't even, I've never even seen that. So I, I want to make it very clear that God is a father that loves his kids. And this blessing from Aaron is, I love you. I'll keep you. I got your back, son. I got your back, daughter. Like, this is my care over you. I bless you even when you don't honor me. Like, my heart is to bless my kids. Like, that's God's heart for you and me. And for some of us that didn't grow up in a real good dad situation, he was abusive or an alcoholic or he, he was just vacant. For many of us, when I say these words, you're like, hey, I wish I knew what that looked like in the real world. But I want to encourage you that that is the true God's real heart for you. The dad loves his kids. And he wants to bless his children. Which leads us to number two. Number one, God's attention is toward his own people. He puts his name on his, pe on his children and he takes care of his own kids. 
Number two, God's desire is to do good to people. God's desire is to do good to people. Why do I focus on this? Because for many of us, um, we think God's out to get us. God's out to wreck my life. And we look back at all the sin we've done and we go, Man, if you knew what I did, you would know God's out to get me. I want you to understand something. God's heart is to bless you. Is God righteous and just? Yep. If you're in sin, you need to repent. You need to repent and get a right relationship with God. But I want you to understand something. That doesn't affect God's heart to bless you. Even when my son screws up, my heart is still to bless him. Does he need to get his relationship right with his dad? Yeah, but, but that doesn't change my heart towards my kid. My heart is always to bless my child. I want to always do good to my children. Child, I've only got one. I, don't, I hope I don't have any others laying out there. <laughs> my heart is always to bless my kid. Even when he screws up, that's my heart to do good. That's the same thing God is speaking of here in this blessing. When God called Abraham from Ur, so Abraham pre was before Moses. Abraham's the first Jew ever. When, Abraham call, when God called Abraham from Ur to go to the land of Canaan, modern day Israel, he was determined to not only bless Abraham, but the whole world. So watch this. Watch how awesome God is. God calls Abraham. He, he was a Mesopotamian. He was living where uh, the Babylonians built their whole empire. So watch, God calls a, a pagan and he, said, he calls a pagan, he goes, I'm gonna bless you. Follow me and I will bless you. A guy named Abraham. From Abraham, from this pagan, God builds the nation of Israel. So everybody that's a Jew is connected back to their first father, Abraham. From Abraham comes the whole nation of Israel. In, later is Moses, right here. And then after Moses, down here is Jesus. So Jesus has the physical lineage, the genetics of Abraham. But he's the God-man. So not only is he God, but he's also man. So from this person, Jesus, God blesses the whole world. All nationalities, all skin colors, everyone in the world. I'm Norwegian. I'm not Jewish. How did, how did God bless me through Abraham? Through Jesus. So G God is a blesser of all people everywhere. Spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, God is the blesser and especially through Christ. We get our sins forgiven. We get a new life. We live lives now that God wants to bless. Look at this. Without God, there is no good or pleasurable thing in the world at all. Ready? I'm gonna lay something down for you. I want you to realize you would have no pleasure in this world if God didn't give it to you. It could be sexual pleasure, could be the pleasure of watching a balloon float over your house. Think about all the pleasure in the world. A new child. A new Ferrari. Praise God, take your pastor for a drive. <laughs> like, think, think of all the pleasures in the world, superficial or super deep. You want to know why you feel pleasure? You want to know why your nerve endings go, this is amazing. Because God has given you the world to enjoy. This world is God's. And he, the reason you feel pleasure of any kind of pleasure, worshiping God, a beautiful sunrise, a beautiful sunset, is because God is a blesser of all people. You only feel pleasure in this world because God allows you to have pleasure. Now, we use some of that pleasure for sin and perversion, but that doesn't negate the fact that God wants to bless your life with everything that he built. That's how much God loves people is he builds this world for us to enjoy. Could be music, could be art, could be anything. Those are, those are, that's an evidence of the blessing of God. All goodness and blessing starts with God and emanates from him, even to those who hate him and are ungrateful. God even blesses atheists who go, I don't even believe you exist. And God still goes, I'm gonna give you something good anyway. That's how awesome God is. God even blesses the ungrateful. Why? Because God is the prime blesser of people. Stop thinking God hates you. Stop thinking God doesn't want to bless you. Stop thinking God is against you. When you repent of your sin and come to know Christ, God is for you. 
You're a part of the family now. God wants to bless your life. He wants to withhold no good thing from you. It won't always be our way, right? Because we want two-day shipping. God, I want, oh, you're going to bless me? Sweet. Then I want the Ferrari in two days. Nope. God doesn't give us our wants. God doesn't give us our greeds. But he will always give us our needs. And even sometimes more. God isn't a big Santa in the sky waiting to fulfill your wish list. But... He is a God that wants to give you even more than you imagined. We don't ever manipulate God. But I want you to understand God's heart to you is blessing. Because God loves his kids. I'll give you an example. Um, You and the Dodgers, come on up. This is totally random. She has no idea. She's going to be in front of the world. Give her a hand, please. Come on up. Now, even though you're not wearing a Minnesota Twins shirt, I'm still going to be gracious to you. Silence all Dodger people. What's your name? Cassidy. Cassidy. So we've never, ever kind of connected me and you, right? Okay, so uh, how, how long have you been at the church? Okay, so you and I have never, we didn't talk about this. This is all, uh, you're just in fear right now. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, good. So understand, here's what I'm talking about. In the middle of, in the middle of our lives, God will bless us. In the middle of our disruption, God can disrupt our disruption and bring blessing. Do you know what I did last night? I went to the bank. And because I'm married, I never see bills that are this large, ever. <laughs> but, so this isn't church money. Some of you guys are like, oh, that's church money. Now, this is out of my own account. And here's the thing. I planned to do this, but I didn't know who it was going to be. And I'm praising God we don't have 10 services. <laughs> so it's a $100 bill. And this is my blessing to you because, w- number one, I, I appreciate you and care about you, even though I, did have any, I, I didn't have any idea in this service who I, would, who I was going to pick out. I just randomly picked you out. But, <laughs> well, maybe it was Dodgers, but probably not. <laughs> maybe in spite of but. I want you to take that home and remember that not only your pastor loves you, but God blesses people in the midst of things that we don't even realize. Okay, will you take that home and do something good? Yeah, I love you. So here's what I want to say. This is a, this is a small example of what I'm talking about. Many times we think, oh, I got to do something to make God love me, or I've done so much wrong that God can't love me. You're misunderstanding the heart of God. The heart, the heart of God isn't, get your act together, and then I'll do something good for you. The heart of God isn't, make yourself amazing to me, and then I'll be amazing to you. No, the heart of God is, whether you've been good or bad in that sense, God's heart is always to bless. God's heart is like right in the middle of your life, God can bless you. Right in the middle of your life, God can bring financial blessing or relational blessing or spiritual blessing. Like God is a blesser of people. He's not trying to rip you off. He's trying to make your life better. He's trying to give you the best. That's the heart of God. God's desire is not to destroy his creation, but to save it, redeem it, and bless it. God is patient and desires to give people the best aspects of life. When people repent and trust Jesus, God delights in bringing goodness and pleasantness to his children, which leads us to our last point. Number one, God's attention is toward his his people. God loves his children. Number two, God's desire is to do good to people. God's not out to rip people off. God's not out to punish and destroy people. He could do that any day of the week. This is what I tell people, right? People go, I think God's out to get me. Bro, listen. If God was going to get you, what? He'd have got you. God knows where you live. It's not like, I'm hiding. He can't find me here. It's like, where's that chick? I was going to totally destroy her, and now I can't find her. No, listen to me. If God was out to get you, he'd have got you. You know why you and I get to live, even when we're in rebellion against God? It's because of God's patience and goodness, waiting for us to repent. I'm laying down a foundation here that I want you to catch. God's heart toward us is good. We don't love God sometimes, but that doesn't change God's heart for us. Lastly, God's blessing is from his heart to people. 
God's attention is toward his people. Number two, God's desire is to do good to people. Lastly, number three, God's blessing is from his heart to people. When Aaron blessed the people to put God's name on them, the people were to be like God in character so he could be with them in companionship. They have to join his family. Likewise, believers are to pray to their heavenly father so they know his heart and realize his goodness, mercy, and love. Just as Aaron blessed Israel as their priest, which we saw in number six, so Jesus, as the believer's high priest, blesses his disciples even before he returns to heaven. So watch this. So we are not Old Testament Israel. So when I talk about Aaron blessing the people of, of, of Israel, uh, we are not Old Testament Israel. So then how can I say God wants to bless us? Well, Jesus blesses his own disciples. Jesus blesses the children that come to him and sit on his lap. So the point is that from creation, when God says, let, let it be, and it was good, all the way to when God creates Israel, he, he blesses them all the way to when Jesus, when, when people come to him, Jesus blesses them. The point is this, all the way from the beginning of creation to the end of history, God wants to bless people. It's God's heart to bless you. It's us that don't want the blessing of God many times because we live in rebellion against God. But that doesn't change God's heart to love you. Ready? Here's our last principle. It's God's pleasure to bless his children both now and eternally by giving them an inheritance in his kingdom. Here's my encouragement to you and we're done. Listen, ready? I want you to know that the God that exists loves you. I want you to know that the God that exists wants your best. I want you to know that God cares for you. I want you to not live in anxiety and chaos. I want you to live in peace, knowing that God keeps you, that God protects you, that God has his eye on you, that God's face shines toward you and his attention is, is on you. I love this. May the Lord bless you and he keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, unlike that child. <laughs> Let's not be like, here's a great example. Let's not be like that this week. <laughs> hey, let us live in peace. Why? Knowing that God's got our back. Knowing that God cares for us. God's not against us, God is for us. Stop living in chaos. Stop living in anxiety. When you put your head down at night, go, God's got me. I put my trust in the God that loves me. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Thank you.